Welcome to the Supply Chain Pioneers Podcast, where we highlight industry leaders on the forefront of innovation and technology in planning, procurement, and logistics. Hosted by your supply chain pro to know, Ulf Venn. It's a holiday bash, and we're going to have a lot of fun. It, it's the last 20 Christmases where I've been able to buy for my wife, wife something that is, is clearly unwanted and unneeded. If you go to Egypt and then suddenly uh, Santa Claus is coming on a camel. Well, many people dream of, you know, white Christmas, uh, but that fall of the beautiful and the magical white stuff doesn't exactly equate to a winter wonderland when you're trying to make it home. Supply Chain Pioneers is powered by Everstream Analytics. Everstream gives you the predictive insights and analytics to make your supply chain faster, smarter, safer, and leaner. Go to everstream.ai to book your demo today. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Supply Chain Pioneers. And this one is a special one because it's a Holiday day bash, and we're going to have a lot of fun and discuss supply chain and Christmas traditions around the holidays and so on and so forth. And with me, I have not one, not two, but three previous supply chain pioneers participants, and they're going to talk to us about all the things that make the holidays fun and how supply chain relates to that. And the first one here is David. Welcome. Thanks, Ulf. Yeah, and David, as you all probably remember, is a supply chain technology advisor. He's an entrepreneur and an investor. With me as well, I have Jan Henna Tyson from Target P. Hi. Hey, Ulf. Good evening. And Jan is especially perfectly positioned to talk about Christmas because he is a procurement and CPO advisor. He helps with procurement transformation, which is like a beautiful story as as Christmas is, and also he's helping with procurement excellence and digital procurement. And then also with me, I have Greg Cronin. Hi, Greg. Hi, Rolf. It's great to be here. And Greg was on our latest episode of Supply Chain Pioneers, and he talked about uh, generational uh, switches in supply chain management and how you can instill confidence in the next generation and how you can help p uh, us get more employees. And he's at Everstream Analytics as a senior director and helps mid-sized businesses and uh, partners to get into supply chain risk management, which is very exciting. So as this is a Christmas episode and we want to have some fun, we start maybe setting the scene a little bit and we do that with a personal Christmas story. And why don't we start with you, David? Can you share a holiday or Christmas story that is related to supply chain management? Yeah, sadly I can, and it's not a single Christmas. Um, it, it's the last 20 Christmases <clears throat> where I've been able to buy for my wife, wife something that is, is clearly unwanted and unneeded. And uh, as a result, I, uh, I am part of uh, the, 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 the big and growing problem of returns in January. Um, I think that's uh, you know one of one of the biggest supply chain challenges that we need to deal with, not just in terms of the cost of returns and their unprofitability for retailers, but the fact that a lot of that ends up in landfills. And so there's an environmental uh, consideration there. So I continue to work on trying to find something that my wife actually wants. But fing fingers crossed for 2023. I'll let you know. I'm I'm pretty confident that probably will work out eventually. <laughs> Right. <laughs> You're together for some time, I believe, right? At one point, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll keep trying. <laughs> yeah, she got you into gardening, right? This is already, as we learned on the episode, she got you into gardening. So maybe you something did. around that would be good. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> good. Jan, what about you? Do you have a story for us? Uh, I think it's slightly different than most of yours. Uh, usually I try to escape over Christmas because uh, I like the sun. I like warm water. I like uh, not the cold. Um, so usually when, when Chris, at Christmas time, it's cold in Germany or at least uh, wet. And uh, the past 20 years, I basically escaped 
almost every Christmas or holiday season, uh, went to some beautiful places uh, around the world uh, to, to let's say, to experience great weather. But at the same time, it was really interesting for me to see how other cultures, how other countries celebrating Christmas, even those countries that uh, you would not directly connect with Christmas. So if you if you go to Egypt and then suddenly uh, Santa Claus is coming on a camel, or uh, if you go to some Asian countries where you uh, where you don't really find a lot of Christians, but at the same time they celebrate even harder than we do with all these fancy Christmas trees. Um, so that's what I connect with Christmas, and uh, I try to stay away. However, this year I will celebrate Christmas uh, back home with my parents and. Uh, what I truly enjoy at Christmas time is the Christmas bakery, of course, and the Christmas sweets. I brought some stuff here with me for our uh, uh, webcast now. And uh, that's what I can say about my Christmas experience or my supply chain experience. I never I never encountered a supply chain issue over Christmas. I don't know why. Uh, I had to fight a lot of issues during the year. But uh, whenever we approach the Christmas or holiday season, it got quiet, which is fantastic because I could go and relax. That's great. And I mean, essentially, Christmas uh, Santa Claus being on a camel delivering parcels is already a, Chris, uh, a supply chain story all by itself. It is. Sure. Okay, Greg, what about you? All right, Ulf. Well, uh, so as a traveling salesman, usually Christmas time means year end, right? So doing what you can to wrap things up. And so I remember a few years ago, I had the opportunity to travel to Buffalo, New York before Christmas time. So now, well, many people dream of, you know, a white Christmas, uh, but that fall of the beautiful and magical white stuff doesn't exactly equate to a winter wonderland when you're trying to make it home. So I remember very clearly my flight was canceled and it, my flight was rebooked uh, just a couple days out. So like a true supply chain practitioner, I really had to pivot. And so I was able to get a rental car, make that eight, 10 hour drive home. And I actually got home uh, ahead of my what would have been my rebooked flight, uh, so home in time for Christmas. So really gave me an appreciation for logistics and operations, right, to plan around those challenges that happen at year end with the weather. And uh, so that's my whole idea of story, really, to be flexible and just pivot when things just, you know, go and fall apart. Yeah. So I, I don't have as creative of st as story than you, you three have, but... Essentially, when I worked in supply chain operations back in the day in supply chain planning, uh, we had a, a, a big issue when it came to item turnover rate, right? It was a little bit way too high. And that actually was the major issue for that was one of our shipments that was extremely expensive was in our warehouse for more than seven years or eight even because of a legal issue where the supplier, uh, where the customer went insolvent. And it wasn't clear if he can, if that still will be purchased or not. And we had to sue the company for it. And essentially, for for my booking, I always had this this one shipment in my bank account. And because the day the days of staying were so long, we we went into major reporting issues. So two days before Christmas, right when we wanted to shut down everything. We got a message from our legal counsel that they finally solved the case uh, on court and we were able to return the shipment home for, for back then scrapping, but at least we got paid for it. And this taking it out of the books felt really like a Christmas gift back then because that, uh, that had so that brought a lot of tension and pressure to the whole organization back in the days. And it was really great. So the feeling was amazing, although it's not as... I would say creative as some of, as some of your answers was, but I really I I went home in a very good spirit. Yeah, I think Jan can maybe relate. He's nodding, so I think yeah. I I do. Yeah, but did they ever tell you why they got it solved right before Christmas? No. Was there some presence or something involved? I I do <laughs> believe they just wanted to close out some court cases, right? Uh, and and had a hurry to just make something happen from all sides i think that's something that the end of the year brings with you uh, with uh, with it right that you want to really solve things get things done and over with and everybody probably eventually look for a pragmatic solution i guess good okay and now we come to the meat of the conversation uh and we start with movies actually and maybe we start with you greg can you tell me 
about a Christmas movie that you really enjoy and how you can maybe relate it to supply chain management? Oh, well, this is a great question. I'm a bit of a movie buff, so I'm going to go with a non-traditional answer. I'm going to pick Miracle on 34th Street. So if you remember the, this Christmas classic, right, it's all about this old man by the name of Chris Kringle who fills in for another Santa uh, for Macy's annual Thanksgiving Day parade. And so let's say with this this other Santa, let's just say he overindulged in some holiday cheer and he was unfit to work that day, right? So that meant that Chris Kringle had to spring into action to solve a labor shortage. So I could see that having some sort of supply chain uh, twist, right? So as he gained popularity and notoriety for doing such a great job as being an, an excellent Santa, it really created a digital transformation for others to really understand profoundly what the Christmas spirit is all about. So that would be my answer for a supply chain twist. That is amazing. I actually don't know the movie. It's a classic. I'm going to gonna have to check it out. Yeah, I have to. It's definitely going to happen. Well, Perfect. that's the difference between Europe and the US. I mean, what, what they call a classic, we don't even know. What we call a classic, they don't even know. <laughs> it's like with digital with digital solutions, you know, all the all the big pride providers from Europe really don't make it in the US and many big providers from the US don't make it in uh, in Europe. So that's probably that this big water between our uh, uh, continents uh, still, uh, let's say, rips something off. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a little bit different for every experience. So so what about you, Jan? What what would be your uh, your movie that you'd want to choose? Honestly, I'm like you. I'm not so much into movies. I remember when I was much younger, uh there's a very famous movie from from Great Britain called Little Lord Fauntleroy. I think David probably knows it well. Um was Alec Guinness, uh pretty pretty cool movie. Uh, but it has become a tradition that every year around Christmas, when I'm not traveling, I at least uh, watch uh, Monty Python's Life of Brian. It has probably not directly <laughs> something to do with uh, Christmas, but uh, to a certain degree, uh, I, I like it a lot. It's fun. It uh, It's somewhere a little bit about Christ and whatever. And uh, yeah, it's cool. It's definitely about the origin story of Christmas, I would say, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. No, <laughs> to, to a certain extent. Yeah, to a certain one, yeah. Yeah. There, there are actually, a, aren't there a lot of good supply chain references in, uh, in, in that one? I'm just thinking real quick. So we have... A few ones, yes. I mean, there, there's a healthcare treatment where he gets a, uh, where he gets a guy to speak by trampling on his foot, right? And then everybody comes and wants him to trample on the foot. So exactly. you have like the healthcare supply that all of a sudden gets really big, and everybody wants wants a piece of a piece of it, and the demand is so high that he has to flee the scene, as one, right? Which is one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie. And then um, there's a stone supplier at the very yeah, beginning. That's what I just wanted to mention, right? <laughs> also in high demand. Uh, <laughs> and a beard supplier as well, by the way. So exactly. Both. Yeah, it's great. Perfect. <laughs> David, what about you? Well, uh, my my choice of movie is maybe a little controversial in as much as I, I think there's quite a few people out there that do not think that this is a Christmas movie at all. Uh, and that's Die Hard. Um, so we can we can debate that for the next 30 minutes if you like. Um, but let's just assume that it is a Christmas movie because it is a Christmas movie, whatever Bruce Willis says. Um, and I I think that the, the thing about that, um, I'm going to choose the one where the baddies are trying to crash the plane. And it relates to supply chains because uh, the, the, the plane landing system at, at night or in bad weather relies upon a digital twin of the landing strip. Um, in much the same way that supply chains increasingly are relying on digital twins to to plan and execute supply chains. Um, and in this case, the baddies. Um, spoiler alert, Bruce Willis gets in the way. Um, but that's uh, I mean, that that's something that I think companies really need to be thinking more seriously about is that cyber risk is, is is very significant in supply chains because we're dealing with a lot of old in industrial control systems but th those risks are actually going to increase not decrease 
as we layer on top of these old systems, newer digital twins that uh, provide a, a much bigger attack surface area for people who, who want to attack uh, supply chains uh, through through cyber attacks. So there you go. That's how you connect Bruce Willis to supply chains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. First of all, it is a Christmas movie. I don't. Yeah. I, I watch it always on Christmas. Is, that's normal. There, no doubt, it's one of the best Christmas movies. I'll go that far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so it really is. They they actually had a Die Hard Four, I believe it was right, the one they just made recently. They, it was all about cyber attacks, which I when I when I heard heard about the plot, I was like, okay, how does that fit together with um, Die Hard? But then he crashed a Porsche into a helicopter, and I was like, "Okay, that's still Die Hard. It's fine." Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it showed the conversion of did. I think it's actually pretty good as a concept because it shows this convergence of digital, and then you still have the physical um, problems that come from that, and then they that's leveraged. So, uh, yeah, it's a big cyber is the issue of the future, essentially, right? So it's a good topic. Good. I also wanted to contribute and my movie that I'm actually going to watch with my with my son uh, this weekend is Home Alone. We watched the first one last year for the very first time and to, this year we're going to do both. And Home Alone I think has several elements but the most important one is every time the kid starts to scream I think about shipments being late. <laughs> because it's like the shocked expression where you're like oh yeah that's a big issue and then obviously right the family not being there uh weather issues having to the mom having to travel back in a van together with a lot of musicians in order to just make it home for christmas and see her son there's a lot of logistical challenges that come with that and it also starts with logistical challenges because there are uh, their luggage stuffing wasn't perfect and everybody was at, was working on it last minute and then they just forgot him at home right so there's a lot of elements that for me contribute to a supply chain story it's a good choice of i i i, I here's something for you because you're better at this kind of thing than i am but i think there's a meme right there when those guys are trying to break into the house and they they keep coming across all these brilliant traps that have been set for them you could just basically that would be a meme for supply chain managers in 2023 <laughs> one thing after another yeah it is yeah this year was a lot right so it's good it's good to relax wind down and do do it like this and yeah we yeah maybe that is a meme actually let's see if i can pull that off <laughs> there there was a good there was a good a good meme I saw recently, which was uh, essentially there was a bird flying into uh, a pit of crocodiles in a zoo, which was totally full. And then uh, it said like the, the bird was essentially a supply chain and then the crocodiles were all sales and they were all trying to, to, to eat it, right? And it was always avoiding last second. It was like, yeah, demand planning gone wrong. <laughs> it was very funny. Well, while we're at it, Ulf, there's another one for you. Back to Life of Brian. You could do an Everstream meme where everyone's complaining, what have the Romans ever done for us? And they're like, well, what about right. roads? Well, okay, what about roads? What, you know, what else have they done? Well, about you yeah. know, sewerage. Right. You could just insert Everstream for the Romans. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. That's actually really funny. Um. I'm trying to not laugh so hard because then this microphone will 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 explode. Uh, okay, let's go to the next topic. Let's start with you, Jan. You're a connoisseur of music. I know that. We talked about this on the podcast before. So what is one of your favorite Christmas songs that you can relate back to supply chain management? Yeah, you're right with the music because behind me, you will see part of my collection. So uh, we're talking about four-digit number here. Um, yeah, I'm pretty special about music, to be frank. This is why I really don't like all the Christmas stuff that you hear on the radio. You remember Last Christmas and all these songs that come back uh, every year. Um, because I like Weird to You more and because, you know, I like Monty Python, I like also the British band called Spinal Tap. And uh, they have a fantastic song which was called or which is called Christmas with the Devil. And uh, that's a pretty cool, funny Christmas song. I mean, you can't relate it to supply chain any. It's just pure nonsense. 
but it's just different and it's cool. The music is great. The language is great. or the lyrics are great. And uh, the band itself is great. I mean, of course, you can link Spinal Tap to logistics because if you know the movie they made uh, 30 years ago when they were on tour and everything went wrong, the drummers died and, and everything went to hell. Uh, that's a perfect um, example how to screw up uh, supply chains. But uh, for Christmas, it's probably that song. I think they're making, aren't they doing another, they're doing a remake or a, a, a sequel? I, I, I heard the other day. They do? Yeah, I think so. They're still alive? <laughs> <laughs> that was my first question. <laughs> well, well, there's so many great quotes in that movie, too. I mean, it's just a timeless classic movie. I mean, my favorite is one where he's got the amplifier and he's like, well, well this one goes to 11. You know, and he's always <laughs> constantly turning it up, which is almost kind of a metaphor for, yeah. you know, challenges in supply chain this past year, right? We're going to 11. So, yeah, it's it's just such a classic. Uh, yeah. Great music, great guys, pretty funny and uh, perfect for Christmas. It's, nice. it's also good to see that you've got an analog collection of music. Uh, a friend of mine was complaining that he'd, he'd lost his entire music collection because it was sitting on a on a hard drive. So that's uh, well played. Yeah, we, 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 we I do it uh, more or less. We were just talking about uh, uh, twins and whatever. Uh, whenever I like music, I buy the CD. I do yep. have Spotify, of course. I do have Tidal because I need high resolution. And I still have a NAS down there where I also rip the CD. So I have it in four ways uh, to make sure that Perfect. it's uh, not gone. And you know how it works with all these digital platforms. If they decide to remove a, uh, an artist, it's gone. And I don't want to have yep. that with, with the stuff I like. There you go. Redundancy in the supply chain, right? On the yeah. music best, chain. Best, best, best practice, analog, yeah. digital. It's like yeah. Bruce Willis setting fire to an airstrip. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good. Hey, Greg, what about you? Uh, well, uh, so off like yourself, I'm a uh, amateur musician, right? And a bit of a rock and roll guy. So I, I really kind of prefer the more upbeat and fun Christmas songs. Uh, so I'm going to go with Run, Rudolph, Run by Chuck Berry. <laughs> okay. All right. Right. Okay. So hear me out. So. In the song, when he goes on to say that boy child was longing for a rock and roll electric guitar and a girl child asked to get a baby doll that can cry, sleep, drink, and wet, I mean, it got me thinking, right? So as amazing as Santa really is, right, to literally span the globe in an evening, he really can't do it alone, right? Because he's got his support team of Mrs. Claus and the elves and reindeer. And so with proper planning and logistics, it's really essential to get that electric guitar and the uh, baby doll where it needs to go on time and in full, right? So I think to me, that's uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Very good. Well, I'm actually impressed. This was amazing. So David, I'm pretty sure you can top that even more. So I'll just pass it over to you. No, I, well, I, I, I'll i be different. Uh, I don't think it'll top it. Um, so... Uh, so there's a song I, I think it, it gets played a ton, but I think it's a fantastic Christmas song by uh, Chris Rea called "Driving Home for Christmas." It just it's a great song, love it. Um, and I always play that when I'm driving home for Christmas. But I think from a supply chain standpoint, it makes me think of the the, the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of delivery drivers and truck drivers that are out there on the roads right now, busiest time of year, terrible weather in the northern hemisphere. And I just, you know, spare a thought for them, um, you know, because and I, I, I very much hope that they'll play that song and actually be able to drive home and be home uh, well in time for Christmas. Yeah. I'm confident that this year, hopefully, given inflation, the demand is not so high and therefore they might have a little bit of uh, a quieter time but it frankly it doesn't look like this if i look outside to the drivers but but talking about this i i also wanted to contribute i actually last year did a top 10 christmas song list that i'm also going to publish eventually again this year but um talking about inflation and maybe a demand uh, one of my favorite christmas songs is all i want for christmas is you because it puts a really positive spin of the topic of maybe missing out on a few presents due to supply chain disruptions or maybe the high high pressure of inflation and so on and so forth another one i really 
I really do like because that is something that literally happened to me quite a bit is so when we had supply problems uh, back in the days, uh, our shipments went through the Alps. So the best excuse we always had was it snowed in the Alps and the shipment didn't deliver on time. So another one I wanted to mention here is Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow by Frank Sinatra, because it really helped us quite out a lot in the past where we just claimed an issue where maybe there hasn't been one. And yeah, that's kind of my two stories on Christmas songs I wanted to share. I have 10 of those, actually. <laughs> You've well, got a whole playlist. Uh, I mean, someone had to choose Mariah Carey, didn't? I mean, you know, she is <laughs> she is the queen of Christmas. Although she actually isn't, because she tried to trademark that and she lost a, a legal suit against herself. So legally, she's not the queen of queen of Christmas. But in yeah. in our hearts, she is. I just always uh, I actually thought about this because I heard the song again. Uh, a couple of days back and I at one point I, I thought to myself so what is she actually doing um on concerts that are not at Christmas time is she still playing the song because it's so wildly successful or is she just not playing it I, I'd imagine people would be disappointed not hearing it live she's probably just on an island counting all her money yeah <laughs> that's a good question yeah I, I think in the I read an article that if you made a, a number one hit in the 80s you were always more or less safe for life in terms of money. It has changed, of course, these days, but I think she, I read an article about her that she was top number one in the uh, US top charts for four years now, uh, every year about on Christmas time. This year, there's, I guess, an elderly lady from the 60s. Uh, she made it to the, to the, to the uh, number one uh, with an old song from the 60s. Uh, I mean, she's around eighty. I ever lost her name, but uh, I'm I, I'm I'm sure, Greg, that uh, that when she may when she's uh, putting out that song uh, over Christmas, the rest of the year she's just uh, going to buy stuff and uh, collect the money she got over Christmas. That's right. <laughs> Good. And now we're we're winding down the holiday and Christmas spirit, and and think more about reflecting on this year a little bit. So if you if you think about this year and what you have learned in your professional career in this year, is there anything that you can relate back as a advice to supply chain professionals listening to the podcast where you say, this is something that I took away from this year that maybe could help others uh, going forward? And let's start with Greg. Uh, sure. Yeah. Well, there's lots of learnings this past year, I guess. Um, so in talking with other supply chain professionals, I mean, I, I think there's not really a better time than now to build just diversity of partnerships, right? To maintain continuity and just maintain operations. So either that's, you know, more you know, supplier diversity, not being single sourced, maybe smart manufacturing with flexibility of components, materials, uh, being aware of potential pinch points, right? With supply chain partners, supply chain hubs, so what I've learned is just to embrace diversity, right, in how you do business, but also not just for resilience, but just for more of, of an efficient uh, supply chain ecosystem. So th those are some of the conversations that I've had this year, and uh, that's something I'd extend to the audience. Good. And Jan, what about you? I can Roger what what Greg just said. Uh, I would I wouldn't say that 2023 was much different than the previous years. I think we we still see the same challenges. Uh, we still see the same technologies. We still see the same right or wrong predictions. Um, what I've learned this year is uh, what Greg just mentioned. It's all about diversity. It's about uh, different approaches to, to a problem. It's about agility, even if some people don't like that term anymore. But we need to be more agile. And I've, I have seen organizations that have become more agile in terms of how do we face issues? How do we respond to issues? Uh, so that's a great learning for me. And the other learning is that we should stop talking about trends every year, even if probably there's a question later. But um, I think what what we need to embrace really this is that uh, so things like supply chain integrity, things like compliance and uh, um, and sustainability have have become more important. I mean, from a German point of view, now lots of companies this year had to deal with this German Supply Chain Due Diligence Act. So we're seeing a little bit the focus shifting. And this is also uh, something that I've learned in 2023, that people that were diehard 
supply chain people now become more like diehard supply chain plus something else people. And I think that will be the trend also in the future. We need to broaden the horizon and we need to embrace a little bit more the diversity as well as the complexity around us. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. David, what about you? Yeah, so in my in my post ever everstream life, I've had the chance to speak to <clears throat> hundreds of uh, chief supply chain officers and, and and tech startups, and so this is kind of reflected wisdom from those conversations. And I would say the thing that I heard most often is that companies have got the technology they need. By and large, what they haven't done yet, and this isn't a new problem, but it's it's getting worse, not better is connect together the different systems that they have or that their trading partners have. And that continues to be an enormous challenge. And the delta between getting it right and getting it wrong gets even bigger when you think about the opportunity to do more with AI and, and, and other digital tools that really can't be done effectively if you haven't got the right systems connected together in, in the right way. So I think that that was, it's not new, but I, I, I heard that so many times this year that that is very much top of mind. Mm. Yeah, for me, a little bit different maybe. It's, I do believe that supply chains got a lot of attention in 2020, 2021, and then even start of 2022. What we... I believe as a collective have somewhat failed to achieve is to maintain that level of urgency and importance, because I do feel that a lot of people have gone back to their ways of looking at tactically, does the shipment arrive today? What is the problem? And so on and so forth, instead of really trying to tackle challenges head on invest. I mean, saying investing in digitalization is very easy, I feel. But it's hard to do because you have to, first of all, you have to achieve that with maybe data problems are in your way, or then also how to use it properly is a big issue that not everybody can, can solve quickly. But essentially, it's about doing more than just making sure the supply chain today runs and be more future looking and drive scenarios and be more there to say, I'm an advisor to the business. And if we go down this path, it's a problem. If we go down that path, it could be a little bit smoother. And really also strengthening supply chain planning, frankly, right? I, I do feel a lot of companies still have issues executing a good supply chain planning cycle with a good accuracy. And that lost them eventually the seat at the table because with tactical day-to-day -day speech, you will not make it in a senior management council, essentially. So I'd hope we, while it's a little bit of a letdown personally, I thought we 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 might achieve more. I, I do believe some achieved it, first of all. Second, there's always a comeback story. There are enough risks out there and we just have to focus on on the right topics and be more supply chain plus something else. Compliance is a good topic. Risk is a good topic. Spent management is something everybody looks into right now. So there are, there are various topics you could specialize yourself in. Yeah. Good. Having said that, sorry, I was a little bit of a letdown, I guess. But having said that, what are your wishes for supply chain professionals in the next year? And David, let's start with you. Uh, well, that, yeah, there's... <clears throat> There's, there's, there's so much to say about that. I think it's it's hard to choose a single topic, um, but I will. Um, and I, I'm going to choose I'm going to choose China as a topic because I think so much of what is happening and what will be happening next year revolves around the the way in which <clears throat> governments and, and companies are looking to change the relationship or the reliance that they have upon China, and and the knock on effects of that are enormous. Um, and it, it's 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 it, it touches every element of supply chain, and my my observation, my my concern is that companies are are doing what they know they need to do, but without the proper analysis. They're looking at their direct suppliers that might be in China um, and moving them to other Asian countries or Mexico or wherever, without a full analysis of 
where those suppliers get their inputs from, which surprise, surprise is probably China. Um, so I think uh, companies really, as they think about 2024 and their, their, their strategic network design, uh, they, they need to do deeper analysis um, and really understand the, the outcomes, the likely outcomes of, 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 of the big multi-year strategic changes that they're, they're making. It, it, it simply, it's crazy not to, and it's possible to do so. Mm -hmm. Totally agree. Greg, what is it for you or anything you want to add to that? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, Dave made a great point. And, and I do love this question, too. I, it actually made me think about one of my favorite quotes of all time is from Mark Twain, where continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Right. And so I think, you know, I extend best wishes for improved supply chain processes, planning and execution uh, 2024, but it's it's also to return back to hopefully quieter times, right? Back to you know, before the pandemic, uh, and just wishing that resiliency and agility are at the forefront of supply chain leaders' minds, but also that we don't get caught up in uh, you know seeking perfection, right? Just continue to learn what we've learned, and then continue to improve where we can and uh, move forward. So that would be my uh, set of best wishes. Good, and Jan. Yeah, Greg already sent best wishes, so I have to roger that as well. Um, I mean, I really would like a lot of people to have a more quiet 2024. Unfortunately, I don't think that 2024 will be much different than this year or the previous years. Uh, I, I don't see any tendencies to that either ge the geopolitical developments or the environmental de de developments or inflation or availability will significantly change. So unfortunately, um, I still see a lot of people working their ass off in 2024. Um, I see also that lots of companies are have now understood the value of supply chain management and they're tr desperately trying to find people. But at least in Central Europe, the job market is more or less empty. So uh, there will be no relief for the people with additional colleagues in their organizations. Um, but I still hope that uh, some people in the C-suite understand the importance of supply chain. I think lots of people now got it the past three to four years, but I also know a lot of uh, companies where uh, the C-suite still doesn't know the, or does not understand or is not even willing to understand uh, the, the beauty and the value contribution coming from supply chain people. And I hope this will change again in 2024 so that people get the, the attention they deserve, they get the recognition they deserve, and uh, they also got the money they deserve. Because I've, again, I've met a couple of companies this year again, where I was told, why do they need this digital solution again? I mean, they have Axel, they have a phone, and uh, hey, it's working well. We get the parts, we uh, the quality is all right. So why do we automate it or why do we need to get it? And uh, so that's something that really scares me a lot, that companies operating uh, complex supply chains still are not willing to invest in these supply chains and not are willing to invest in, into the humans managing the supply chain and my i really cross my finger that this is going to change again 2024 mm -hmm. and my wishes go in a similar direction i i do wish for the sake of diversity but also for for the sake of just um, getting the job done that more younger people join supply chain management we get more talent more diverse talent from different regions to foster more mutual understanding and uh, find new ideas because I, I feel a lot of people are set in their ways and uh, the young generation is is showed us in the climate debate that they're willing to to challenge uh, existing ideas and try to reset them so I do hope we find a lot of people that are interested to join help us uh, make everything happen and and get Get things get things done essentially, right? That's kind of it. Good. Good. And with this, actually, I'm at the end of what I wanted to ask. And we have made a, a really, a, I would say, a nice Christmas episode, personally. Any objections or <laughs> points to add here? Just to say very Merry Christmas to everyone. Yeah. 
Yes. Exactly. And with this, and I want to say, <laughs> yeah, and Happy New Year. That's a good one. I actually want to say I have one more song that I didn't mention at the very beginning of my favorite Christmas songs. And that's really one of my favorite Christmas songs. And it's from Paul McCartney. And it's called Wonderful Christmas Time. And that's what I'm wishing everybody here. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Greg. But also to the listeners. And with that, I want to say uh, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy, New Year. Merry Christmas. You. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Thanks. This was Supply Chain Pioneers. Thanks for watching, listening, or however you are enjoying this podcast. You can find Supply Chain Pioneers on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all other major podcast players, as well as on YouTube at Ulf Talk Supply Chain. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. See you next time.